is not the only person involved in the buying decision around you and often you versus some other vendor. Sometimes it's you versus why now, it's you or nothing. Uh, but sometimes it's a competitive process. Selling in a tight economy is not easy. For many sales professionals, it comes back down to what are you going to do to differentiate yourself from your competitors and also help your prospects to recognize the need for change, even though things may be difficult. If you're an order taker, I'm sorry, it's going to be really rough for you. On this episode, we're going to point out four things that you should be considering and you should be aware of when it comes towards selling in a tight economy, especially if you're selling upstream, mid-market, or even enterprise level. Check it out. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and this episode is fun, um, and if you've not listened to our podcast before, it's your first time listening to our show, subscribe to this podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, and also tell one other person about the show and about specifically this episode, how they can find benefit from it. As you and I are out there as sales professionals, we're seeing a lot of things right now, interesting times. And the more insights we can get that can help us to one up or be one level better. Yeah, let's just you know start at the beginning. I, I think a natural tendency for someone new in sales, okay, they start in sales, you're representing this hot new technology, you're excited about it, you're sold on it, you got existing customers. You've got a prospect that's signed up for a demo or otherwise expressed interest and you're so excited to get on the phone with them because you're going to tell them all about how awesome your product, your widget is, like what you can do for them. And so your first instinct is often to tell them how awesome what you work on is when what is a better strategy, especially longer term and you know going through this as a repeat game, is to be curious and to listen more. What brought you to me today? You know, rest assured that your product is awesome and you're going to get around to that. But your first job is to just listen and understand why are we having this conversation? Where is this person coming from and how can you help them? And that patience, that just taking a moment to listen is hard and it takes discipline. And so, you know, that's what I'd say on the, on the first point there is be curious, listen, look up who you're talking to ahead of time. If someone is bothering to talk to you in sales, it means that their questions weren't answered online or yeah. they think they fall into some category not addressed by your website. And they're looking to you as smart human to help them navigate this process. Well, let's go to point number two, then it's like bridging a gap between um, with value and the company's goals. Um, talk to us a little bit more about this. How, this. how will this help us, especially in this tight economy? Right. So companies have been through the ringer this past year. So being a salesperson, it's good to have empathy for your prospect. And they probably had company goals a year ago that might have changed to today. Yeah. And typically when a company like when we bring on a vendor, that vendor will often be able to do a lot of different things in order to break through the clutter and be something that we actually bother to roll out. There's something specific we're typically looking for from that vendor that usually aligns with an, a major initiative we have going on this quarter or this year. So for a salesperson, when you have that initial conversation, your best bet to get them to buy is to understand their business, understand where are they coming from? What are they trying to solve for? So you can be a partner to them in getting there in that process. And that's something that surprisingly few companies do well when I talk to them. Be curious about our business. What are we trying to solve for? What are our top objectives? And therefore, how might they be able to tie into those? Or is now not a great time and we should maybe check back in six months? We're focusing on who they are, you know, what they want, the company goals. The curiosity aspect is one of those aspects, one of those things you mentioned. Is there a way that you teach curiosity with your sellers or encourage them to practice curiosity? I think you can train it out of people. And I think that curiosity requires some discipline and some patience. And what we do with our sales team when we onboard someone new is we will just go over all the different use cases for Docsend and all the gotcha. customers who have used it. And we try to show them that it's not a cut and dry specific template that you know, this is exactly why people use it. We show them here are some different personas. This is why they use it. Some of the, here are some of the stories of why people use it. 
And then when they get on the phone with a prospect, their job is to do the research ahead of time, figure out, hey, who is this person? What's the role of the company? What type of company is it? What use case do we think this might be for them? Why might they be coming to us? But then when we get on the phone with them, we've already kind of narrowed in on like, hey, what brought us to this conversation? Like what's going on in your business? And they have in their back pocket ready stories about other companies like them and the benefits they've gotten out of it. And they have in their mind examples of different parts of our product and value propositions that might be relevant, but they don't bring those out until they have asked questions around what is that prospect trying to solve for? And therefore, what of our product is most relevant to them? And so that, that curiosity is born of some training around, you know, and also just frankly telling them, like, think about it from their perspective. If you just come out swinging, you give them three value props, none of those are relevant. You've kind of lost them, right? <laughs> so you know, think of your own quota at the end of the day and have some faith in the process here that the, the patience and the curiosity will pay off. And a lot of these tactics are things that we've, historically only seen for enterprise sales, you know, hey, million dollar contract. Yeah. Obviously you should do your homework. Obviously you need to understand the buying process and who's involved in the buying process. But we've seen that at least in our customers, those tactics come down in deal size a lot, even if it's a 20K, 30K deal, uh, even if it's a transactional 5K deal, doing a little bit of discovery, asking the why can be really helpful to make the process smoother and more transactional later on down the line. You don't need to resell somebody if in the first couple of conversations, you've really hooked them around like, oh my gosh, I need this tomorrow. I have a very clear concept of what problem this is solving for me and it aligns very much to what I need to do right now. So you ironically see the process go a lot faster if you're a little bit more patient in those first couple of calls. The third point that we had highlighted was the idea of using their own lingo or their own language um, when it comes to um, you know, navigating or helping a, a prospect. Talk to me a little bit more. How and why? Well, why is this so important? And you've seen using their own language and give us some examples of what kind of language you, you mean by that. Yeah, sure. So oftentimes, especially if it's a, you know, a larger deal, 50,000 a year up for, for SaaS, the person you're talking to is not the only person involved in the buying decision around you and often you versus some other vendor. Sometimes it's you versus why now it's you or nothing, yeah. uh, but sometimes it's a competitive process, but because the person you're talking to is only one of the people involved in that decision, even if you convince them, you need to help them convince everybody else inside of their company. And that person, your champion, who you're talking to, they're putting their internal reputation on the line, betting on your software. If you don't do what you say you're going to do, it's going to look very bad for them. And especially in a tight economy, people are very conscious of their jobs and they it's harder to switch jobs and it's a, it's a big decision picking a vendor. So one thing you can do just to help save them time is to, in the discovery, hear the language that they're using about their own business, whether it's efficiency or insights or you know, you're just trying to close more deals or we're trying to become more efficient in it or, hey, we've reduced our headcount and we've got to do more with fewer people. How can we do that? Or we're going through a reorg and, you know, these are the things we need to align to. Or we have a new product launch coming out and we need to get these pilot customers with, you know, sold on it. And so by using their language, you're just helping them do their job. They can turn around and instead of translating what you're telling them, you've already done that translation for them and they're going to be more effectively able to represent your value proposition in their language internally. In this situation, what if, why should I consider Doxen as a sales professional or a sales leader listening to this episode? Well, Doxen, like a lot of products, there are other ones that are like it. Uh, so, you know, I think for us and our you know 30,000 plus customers, what Doxen does really well is we'll replace attachments with links. We'll show you who's reading them. We'll show you who they get forwarded to, how long they spend on each page. We make it secure so you can make sure it doesn't get beyond the intended audience and make it dead simple for your recipients on the other side. There's also e-signature, their data rooms, their deal rooms. There's a whole bunch of different functionality inside of Doxen. But what we're trying to do ultimately is make it really easy for you as the seller to find and package and send over critical material to your prospects so that they can have it all in one spot. It's personalized. They can forward it internally. It just makes you look better as a salesperson and more knowledgeable. And so, you know, 
for us, that's been something that makes me very happy that we're able to help so many people with. And to your point about you know, a lot of people are salespeople, but don't actually recognize it. We have so many founders that use Docsend for fundraising and fundraising yeah. is effectively a sales process. And so for them, <laughs> same things apply. Do they care? What resonates? Who's involved? Where do I spend my time? Uh, and so, yeah, it's awesome to see so many people be able to become more efficient with what they do using our software. Hey, that was Russ Heddleston. And if you want to go ahead and connect with Russ, you can find him on Twitter. You can find him on LinkedIn. And also check out Docsend. You can find their link below. Um, no pun intended there with the link, right? But if you think about it from your perspective, when you send stuff or attachments, it's it's you don't know who's looking at them and, and how they're engaging with it. This allows for you, again, to sell in a more effective, insight way, insightful, enterprise level selling no matter what you sell even if you're selling to a you know smb just understanding the way that your buyers are engaging and interacting is going to be so 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 helpful for you especially going into this tight economy and that's why docsend is is a great tool we want you to know what to say when you reach out to them we want to help you to close more deals but most importantly we want you to raise your level of thinking and go out and do big things thanks so much for watching